When you first started your voyage in Star Citizen, one of the most exciting parts of that new journey is your first new ship purchase. If you're anything like me, you quickly hopped online onto YouTube or Reddit looking for an interesting ship to buy with all that hard-earned AUEC. Some of the most common recommendations are a Drake Cutlass Black, its competitor the Misk Freelancer, or its bigger brother the Freelancer Max. But which is right for you? Hello folks, Space Tech here, and welcome back to another ship showdown. Today, we're going to be breaking down all the differences, advantages, and disadvantages between the Drake Cutlass Black and its competitor, the Misk Freelancer. Due to the fact that the Cutlass is often recommended for its ability to carry an ROC mining vehicle, we will also be comparing it to the Freelancer Max, the variant of the Freelancer that can hold an ROC. First off, the price. The Cutlass Black comes in at around 1.4 million, the Freelancer at 1.7 million, and finally the Freelancer Max at about 2.2 million AUEC. With this much difference, is the price really justified? Let's find out. Starting off with the tour. First, the Cutlass Black. The only entrance you can always use is the ramp on the back, but the two doors on either side can always be used for a quick exit. The side doors can also be used to get back on the ship in low or no gravity environments. In the front, there are two beds, a gun rack, the pilot and co-pilot seat, and finally the turret seat. The base freelancer also has a ramp in the back for loading and unloading vehicles. Stepping inside, you're in the cargo deck, which also contains the top turret. In the next room, there's a docking collar if you ever want to EVA in from the top of the ship. In the next section is habitation, which contains four beds, a bathroom, and some small kitchen amenities. Finally, in the cockpit, there are four seats, one of which is the pilot's seat. The Freelancer Max is almost identical to the layout of the Freelancer other than this wider cargo bay. It also has a turret in the same spot as the Freelancer base, and we'll revisit this in the combat portion of the video. One of the most noticeable improvements that these ships bring over your starter ship is the cargo bay. Most starters only have a tiny amount of storage, if any. These ships aim to change that. The cargo capacity of these ships is as follows. The Cutlass Black can hold 46 SCUs of cargo, the Freelancer 66, and the Freelancer Max a crazy 120 SCU. In all reality, you aren't really going to be making any decent profit running cargo in any of these ships. That being said, these ships are recommended for their ability to open up a variety of gameplay. So here's what ideal profits look like in each ship. For each of these, the assumption is that you can fill up on Laranite, a common trading commodity, and then sell all of it. Also, while exact profit amounts might change with the dynamic economy, these numbers should represent the relative profit that you would make. The Cutlass Black would be able to load up 46,000 Laranite and sell it for a profit of 27,700 AUEC per trip. The Freelancer would be able to load up 6,600 and make a profit of about 39,700. Finally, the Freelancer Max would be able to load up on 12,200 Laranite and make a total profit of 73,300 per trip. As you can see, the Freelancer Max is the only ship that would ever really be worth your time to do some trading in, but you can definitely try out the game loop with other ships. That being said, there are much easier and faster ways to earn money in the verse, so I wouldn't be making my purchase based on that. Now, whether you're doing some trading or dropping off vehicles, an important part of any ship is how it fights. As ships that are regarded as Swiss Army knives, these ships also perform rather well in combat. Let's see how they compare. Once again, the go-to setup for weapons on these ships are laser repeaters, so we'll assume that all of these ships are outfitted completely with laser repeaters. First off, the Cutlass Black. The pilot controls four size 3 hardpoints. These would give you a total of 2000 DPS per full capacitor. If you're a relatively new fighter, then you may prefer running them gimbaled with size 2 repeaters instead. This would drop your DPS down to 1600. This would be around a 20% drop. Most experienced players I know would just run these fixed for the increased DPS. In addition to pilot guns, the Cutlass also has a turret equipped with two size 3 hardpoints, giving it a DPS of 1000. As for missiles, there are six racks that can give you a total of 48 size 1 missiles. Next, the Freelancer. The pilot controls four size 3 hardpoints that are forced to be gimbaled. This gives you a total of 2000 DPS. The turret gunner has two size 2 hardpoints, giving it a DPS of 800. It also has room for 32 size 1 missiles. Finally, the Freelancer Max has the same gun setup as the base Freelancer, except it only has room for 24 size 1 missiles. From this, we can see that if you're solo, you're going to be able to do the same theoretical DPS in all of the ships, but will likely hit more shots in the Freelancers because they have their guns gimbaled. Now, if you have a gunner in the turret, the question becomes more interesting. Because of the position of the turret on the Freelancers, their gunner has basically no ability to fire on the same target as the pilot, since the target dips underneath the middle hump on these ships. 
This means that in most fights with a gunner, you're going to be much better off fighting in a cutlass than the freelancer. If you're solo, then the maneuverability of the ships comes much more into question. The top speed of the cutlass is around 1114, where it's about 1005 on both the freelancer and the freelancer max. Overall, I do find it easier to throw the cutlass around when compared to the freelancers. This is likely due to the smaller length and larger thrust. Speaking of which, the Cutlass Blackkin also switches rear thrusters into VTOL mode if you ever need to get off of a planet in a hurry. That means that the Cutlass is going to be better if you ever find yourself landing at Jumptown and then needing to get out in a hurry. Well, at least when it comes to speed, that is. When looking at durability, does Drake's infamous reputation of being held together with duct tape really come to life? Well, first the Cutlass has 32,120 HP. The Freelancer has 30,200, and finally the Freelancer Max has 19,200. Where the differences really show is in the shields though. The Cutlass only has one size 2 shield, giving it a total shield HP pool of 9,000. Compare this to the two size 2 shields on the Freelancers, giving them a total shield HP pool of 18,000. This difference is really going to show in prolonged fights, where it's going to be much easier to start chipping away at the Cutlass's hull HP when compared to the much larger shield pool of the Freelancers. When it comes to claim times, the Cutlass Black has an expedited claim time of 2 minutes and 15 seconds, the Freelancer has 3 minutes and 18 seconds on its timer, and finally the Freelancer Max comes in at 3 minutes and 54 seconds. A final consideration for these ships is what vehicles can fit inside of each ship. When it comes to the PTVs, all of the ships can fit multiple of them without any issue. Even two of the brand new STV fits inside of all of the ships quite comfortably. The Cutlass Black and the Freelancer Max can each hold two Cyclones if you park them carefully. Finally, none of the ships can fit an Ursa, or any larger vehicle. A very cool note is that the Freelancer Max can also hold a P-52 Merlin snub ship that comes with the Constellation. A very cool party trip. Something that these ships really excel at is being your taxi for getting around the verse as quickly as possible. If you are looking for the fastest ship to get you around the verse, I'd recommend looking at my video covering exactly that topic that I've linked underneath the like button. Wrapping up, my preference is definitely going for the Cutlass Black. It has all of the potency I need to do some mid to high tier PvE combat while still retaining its relatively small footprint allowing you to land in tight spaces and bring out a variety of useful vehicles. Personally, I find the extra SCU on the Freelancer and Freelancer Max just not worth it for cargo trading, since it isn't a very lucrative game loop at the moment, in anything smaller than a C2 or a Caterpillar. While I do appreciate the extra durability of the Freelancers, I find myself thanking the extra speed I get in the Cutlass as I fly down into a planet or out of atmosphere. While these are my reasons for preferring the Cutlass, I always recommend trying out these ships either by renting or borrowing them from a friend, since everyone has different preferences and different things that they value in a ship. And that wraps it up, so comment below what is your favorite of the three. Also, please like and or subscribe if you enjoyed this breakdown, and comment with what else you would like to see me compare. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.